I bet you've seen this and also this. And yes, you are not alone. There are thousands and thousands of candidates right now going through the same pain. So why is everyone struggling to find a tech or data job? In this video, I'll share with you the reality of the current job market and what we can do to overcome these obstacles and get closer to that job offer that we dream of, even if we are complete beginners. And by the way, if you're looking for a job now, make sure to leave a comment below as I would love to know more about your story. And if you stay with me till the end, you will also see how I can personally help you to find a job. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. So let's understand what's happening in the job market. At the very ground level, we know that companies have you for one main reason the value you bring to the table but since they can't just magically see your potential they rely on your experience and education as clues this can be tough for beginners who don't have much to show yet hiring a newbie is a gamble for companies with the hope that it will pay off as you learn and start contributing so what's our game plan we load up on courses certifications and anything that can prove we are worth the bet it's all about showing we've got what it takes but there is a twist. The economy plays a big part too. When times are tough for companies, layoffs happen because they need to save money. People lose their jobs and they go back into the job market. And these people are now looking for jobs. But the companies are not hiring because they need to save money. So we have fewer jobs on the market available and even more experienced people are competing for them. This is the reality we are currently living in. However, the reality is also that most people will navigate the job market in the wrong way. Now that we understand the context we are dealing with, let me tell you what I would do to find a job the smart way. So the first suggestion that I have is to stop consider yourself as a beginner. And let me explain here. We all know that finding a job without having any prior experience is definitely harder. But my question to you is, is it true that you don't have any relevant experience? This is something that I always ask to my mentees. And I will always remember the call I had with this young student that was trying to find a data analyst job. And she told me that she had zero experience. When I asked her to tell me if she had any side jobs while studying, she told me that she worked for a restaurant in the summer as a waitress, and that was pretty much all the work experience she had. Now, what I told her is to use that experience and make it relevant to the position she was looking for. Now, I know that you might think that working as a waitress in a restaurant has nothing to do with a data analyst job. And yes, you're right, if you stop there, then I agree with you. There is no connection between the two. But what if we say that while she was waitress in a restaurant, she also helped the restaurant manager at the end of each week to create simple reports and see how revenues and expenses were changing week over week. All of a sudden, this restaurant experience can become actually super relevant to the role you're looking for. And this is how instead of presenting yourself as a beginner, you use your past experience in the most effective way possible. Now, I also anticipate your next question. But Laura, I didn't do this while I was in the restaurant, so why are you telling me to lie about my previous experience? And my answer to you is that as long as you are confident that you have the skills to do what you're saying you did in the past, and as long as you are confident to explain the story to an interviewer and answer any questions they may have, then I don't see any problem with that. Also considering that most people out there will pump their experience, and especially if you're a beginner looking for jobs, this is not the time to get humble. So again, never present yourself as a beginner and spend Spend some time to see what you have in your past that can be twisted and reused in your favor. The other suggestion that I have is to setting our sights to the real price. Getting a job at Google right now might seem impossible. And let's be real, who wouldn't want to be part of the tech elite at Google or Apple? These tech firms have got cash to splash and they can pick and choose from the best of the best, leaving beginners in the dust. So here my tip, instead of throwing ourselves into the ring with virtually everyone else, and facing some seriously steep odds, why not pivot to a path that is less covered? I'm talking about looking for those under the radar companies, the ones that we don't see across heavy headlines, but are silently scouting for fresh talent. With less competition, these hidden gems could be your golden ticket to kickstart your tech career. It's all about playing it smart and local, find those opportunities when nobody is looking. A tip here is to look for companies that might go public soon, cause those might have a very high growth and could also give a huge financial 
potential return, as the IPO might pump their market valuation. Or look for those companies that are leaving the startup phase to become proper, more structured businesses. For example, you can look for the list of companies in your location that have a $1 billion valuation, also called unicorns. Remember, nobody starts the learning journey by creating a masterpiece on day one. It's all about those small, steady steps, building your skills bit by bit. And the same goes for your career. Instead of leaping for that top company on the ladder, you can definitely get the same or even better experience going for the small fish. And in case, if you like, jump into the big one on the next step. Your dream job is the one that gives you chance to grow. Learn and start your journey on the right foot. The next point that I will make it is to focus on practice always. As we said at the start, the one thing that companies are looking for in candidates is relevant practical experience. And so practice has to be your top priority. In some cases, I would actually suggest to start a project and learn the theoretical aspects while you are getting stuck in the different steps to complete that project. To me, the most important thing is to avoid spending all of your energy in reading and learning theoretical aspects and then not doing the actual work. And this is what happens, for example, when people watch dozens of videos on how to be more productive, instead of switching off all their devices and start working heads down. Doing courses and certifications is definitely the way to acquire new skills, but I would definitely suggest you to choose a course where the practical aspects and applications to real world scenarios are the main components, as well as making sure that the course will guide you to real projects that you can then showcase to recruiters and potential employers, which by the way is exactly the approach I'm taking with my new data analytics master course. And if you are interested in that, you can check out the link in video description to know more. So again, make sure to find the right balance between theory and practice while you're learning. Then the other super important aspect to consider is that who you know is greater than what you know. A lot of people will tell you that networking is crucial. And I already know that the first thing that comes into your mind when you hear the word networking is that you think that you don't have any network or you don't know anyone. Well, my tip here is that you should start with the people that are closer to you because that is still considered your network. Maybe you are at a dinner with your family and your uncle is that. Well, even if you may think that he's not going to be of any help for you, why don't you just explain to him what you're looking for? Describe to him the role in the same way that you would describe the role to a five years old and you will never know what could happen after that conversation. Maybe he will ask the friend at the church that he's meeting every week, or maybe the other friend that he meets for breakfast on a Saturday. Remember that word of mouth is super powerful, even if most of the times we don't realize it. And best of all, you don't lose anything by asking one more person. After you're done with your closest circle of friends, then it's definitely the time to reach out to people on LinkedIn. But always bearing in mind that there must be an element in your message that will sparkle curiosity to the recipient. Always think that the person you're trying to reach out to might receive another five similar messages that day. And so ask yourself why this person should answer to you instead of the other five people. So make your message more interesting to read or more personal. Do some research on the other person. Maybe you have a friend in common or maybe you come from the same country or maybe you will know a curiosity of the company they work for. Remember that if you manage to connect with this person, they will likely be happy to refer you if they understand you have the right skills as they will also likely get a referral referral bonus if you end up getting an offer. Most people see referrals as favor, but actually often is a win-win situation. And this is why if you see a role you're interested in in the Amazon career website, for example, just send me an email with the job ID and your resume, and I will be more than happy to refer you. I cannot guarantee an interview, but I can guarantee that your resume will at least be seen by the recruiter. And I can also chase the hiring manager if needed. If you apply these aspects that we covered, I can guarantee that you will get closer to that job offer. As always, make sure to check the video descriptions because there are some free resources you can download, including my resume and portfolio template. And if you got value from this video, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. It helps more than you think. I will also leave here another video that you might want to check out. And with that said, enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.